the gospel. The gospel is the mystery of humanity's hiddenness in Christ through the revelation of Christ crucified, the gift of God towards all humanity. This message supplies faith to those who believe in the message of reality. This is the revelation of what God did in Christ on the cross. Revelation illuminates both the worldview of God's love and the identification of Christ's life within the believer. When man fell, they fell to a separate identification outside of I am. They also fell from comprehending the fact that they were in Christ. Sin was the nature and condemnation was the stamp of disapproval. Like a fish outside of water, this blinded man to their identity in union with God. They ate of the I am not tree. The gospel is a revelation of what God did in Christ on our behalf. It's the lens to the new world of the spirit, the new heavens and earth in Christ. This is what the sevenfold spirit of God illuminates when we are filled with the spirit of Christ. We begin to comprehend the realm of Christ's love and abundance. We awaken to Christ's comprehension and Christ's worldview. Many people only know what it means to be forgiven, but not justified. Justification means you no longer identify with the sinful state and you're actually brought back to, the, to where the free man dwells. As a result, your consciousness no longer identifies with your temporal body, but your eternal spirit man. Jesus was Noah's ark, and humanity was in him. We were raised into the dimension of newness of life, a whole new world. When we believe this truth, we receive the identity that can see and exist in the kingdom. Jesus being raised from the dead was the declaration of us being raised from the dead. So his death was to separate us from the sinful nature, living from the temporal existence. And his resurrection was to restore us to, the, to his heavenly nature, his eternal existence. But if we only see it as a positional truth, we minimize the power of the spirit and exclude ourselves from living in the kingdom. Fallen Adam lived in the realm of earth where he had a time limit, but risen Christ lives in heaven where there is a timeless fellowship. This is eternal life. Justification wasn't just to make us feel good on earth, but it literally unveils where we are in the kingdom of heaven. We are seated in heavenly places. Our old man was put off in the body of Christ. If this is true, why do we still have psychological and sin issues today? Well, Jesus told us that he would send us a helper, his mind. That would bring remembrance to his word, his mind in us. Holy Spirit was sent to help us to identify in Christ. And with his righteousness, Holy Spirit reveals our present position and identification in Christ. As a result, we grow in the expression of the fullness of Christ within us, which is love. The context of Holy Spirit development is not repairing Adam, but revealing Christ. It is revealing the risen Christ in heavenly places and as a result, his reign and rule being executed on earth as it is in heaven. We inherit faith, the gift of faith, when we hear the message of what God did in Christ. Then, faith perseveres through the lies and temptations of the old system of darkness and inherits the eternal promise of eternal life. Faith is not about becoming, but about believing in what Christ has become for us and as us. Christ has become our sinful nature, so he would nail it to the cross. Christ has become our resurrection from the dead, 
so he would justify the ungodly and therefore reconcile humanity to their rightful state. He restored, he restored the image of man to divinity. This is the gospel of God's grace. We have a helper that helps us to identify with the present state of the risen Christ. But the focus of faith is not on its becoming, but on Christ who has become. We fix our eyes on Jesus. He keeps us in perfect peace when our minds are stay on him. He strengthens our feet to stand when we delight in his ways. We reflect as we believe. What we come to know to be true about him, that same nature reflects through us. This is the work of the Spirit, to make known within us Christ and his righteousness. The revelation of our union with him in heaven overcomes the lie of our identity in Adam. Faith has an objective focus, which is Christ. When faith loses sight of Christ, fear begins and sin begins. Fear is the absence of faith. The subjective identification comes as the result of the mind set on the object of God. So faith comes by the objective hearing of the objective reality of Christ. We are dead to sin, which is the subjective focus, and alive unto God in Christ Jesus, which is the objective focus. Eternal life is not a subjective development, but the illumination of our union and fellowship with the Father and the Son. Even if we fail to grow in this direction, this is the truth that strengthens us to stand. It strengthens us to come. The cross of Christ permanently engrafted humanity in the Godhead. This truth has made us free. Anything that turns us towards our self de to develop us unto the subjective focus is another gospel. The desire to be perfect was the result of the fall of man. The subjective need for perfection was our downfall and caused us to overlook Christ's perfection. As a result, Christ was a stumbling block. But the result of the risen state of Christ is to perfect our focus on his perfection for us and as us. And this is what he is the author and finisher of. Our faith isn't our focus, but Christ, who is our perfection, is our focus. Repentance is to stop living from the subjective mind of progression to the objective mind of Christ and his finished work. Christ, the solid rock I stand. He is what all revelation and wisdom flows from. Our house is eternally built and is now being revealed to us. In Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4, it states, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? And it says, Who has clean hands and a pure heart? Who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear deceitfully? He shall receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. This seems like a lifelong to-do list, but in truth, it is the result of those who receive the gift of God. The cross was the clean hands and the spirit was the pure heart. Holy Spirit shines light on Christ in heaven from within us. This is Christ in us. Holy Spirit wells up to the throne room consciousness, the fear of the Lord. <clears throat> the mind of Christ was given to us. When we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own mind, we begin to see life through the mind of Christ. We see beyond our human existence. We see beyond Adam. We begin to remember who I am. This is the means to overcoming the old man, the memory of the new man. The memory of the new man is what overcomes the lie of the old man. This, let this mind be in you Metanoia means to change who's thinking inside of you. From Adam to Christ. 
The mind of Christ contains the memory of Christ concerning all aspects of the human life and eternal life. This enables forgiveness and true repentance. <clears throat> the gospel is the power and wisdom of God. The power is the divine enablement. This enables one to be translated past the realm of death into the realm of life. This enables the believer to inherit all things that is Christ. The wisdom of God is not a how, is not a how but, but a who. Through Christ, God destroyed the sinful nature. In Christ, God raised humanity from the realm of the dead. In Christ, God seated man in heavenly places at his right hand. And through Christ, we inherit, this, we inherit salvation and righteousness. The Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. When we engage who, the who, he fulfills the how concerning us. This dismantles every human wisdom. This is why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wow. That's why Paul said, where is the philosopher of this age? Where is the wise man? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the wise? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19. God has given his strength to the weak. He has given his praise to babes, and he has hidden it from the wise. To the wise, he gives the law so that they will humble themselves to trust him. But, the, but to the trusting ones, he gives grace because it is a free gift. It's not earned. The gospel depends on God's power and wisdom that flows from Christ, the blood from the throne. The blood of Jesus is the force that breaks all bondage and heals all diseases. So any philosophy or principles or disciplines as a means to personal freedom will inherit, will never inherit the gift of righteousness. Righteousness comes by faith in Christ alone. The gospel is about what God did in Christ, not what he does through you. <clears throat> or not what he does in you. Christ is the object of the gospel. He represents man and died on man's behalf. We are beneficiaries to what, of what God did in Christ. So we shouldn't seek to be developed, but for Christ to be revealed. The whole need, hallelujah, the whole need for subjective development and healing was the result of the fall of man. Eve believed the lie that wisdom was something to become rather than a person. So she forfeited relationship with the present person of wisdom for an idea of a journey to become wise. Christ become a stumbling block. Christ became a stumbling block. It's just like looking all around your house trying to find your nose. The revelation of the present person of Christ is our healing. This, what's true of him is initially true of us. Therefore, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the word of God, and we see him as in a mirror. Let's not seek for the self to be better, but let's seek Christ, who is our best. <laughs> he supplies righteousness to our being. We are dependent on his blood like a branch lives off of the blood of the vine, Jesus. This doesn't mean that we don't experience the counsel of God. God's counsel just counsels the unbeliever to believe Christ and counsels the believer to remember Christ. That's why Jesus said, Holy Spirit will glorify him. Christ is our true identification right now. Christ is our righteousness. In the book of Colossians, Paul told them not to be deceived because in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. and You have been brought to that fullness. Paul always counsels the believer to, to, to the present tense fullness because of the past tense cross. As we believe, we remember. As we remember, we behold what has always been present, which is our divine union with the risen Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat>